<laughs> Can we ever start oh. a show where you're not laughing? <laughs> no. No. Oh. Hey, guys. Welcome to episode 59 of Ripping the Rack podcast. I am one of your quadriplegic, quadrophenia, quad hosts. We're, we're down to try hosts. Go. So we only have... Sorry, I'm a, I'm on a delay, so hold on, hold that gold thought for a second. Uh, so we're, you know, so episode uh, 59, Ripping the Rack podcast. I'm Tim. With me today on my left is the Coastal Crusader, fresh from his uh, debut in the ring, Mr. Brian Athern. Brian, how are you, buddy? I am very good, very tired, as you can oh! tell by my voice. There's Tim's Sorry. delay. As you can tell by my voice, I screamed my lungs out, and clowns are still terrifying. Yeah, it didn't look like you were screaming when the clowns were by it. Looked yeah, like I was going to say, it looks pants. like you <laughs> shit your pants and crying a little bit there, buddy. Sin Bodhi's the scariest clown I've ever seen in my life. Nice. Good Lord. And the tri-leg, the third leg, the whatever you want to call him, he is on the right today. He is up north. He is the king of the north, Calvin Locke. The king is here. It is hot and muggy as hell. <laughs> yes. Yes, and it Ma- is. Marky is currently on his way back from Colorado with the boys. Marky's a little beat up, a little bruised. One Damon Ace got his, uh, gave him his comeuppance for some comments on our, on my other show. And uh, yeah, so Marky's on his way home with a few bruises. He had to, he had to spend a day in the local medical facility. Yes. Recovering. <laughs> That was, uh, I will admit, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, so uh, Brian and Marky are part of the Dudes and Belts chat cast on Sunday evenings with John Starner, uh, Rio, and Jeff Walsh, and uh, they are affiliated with Rocky Mountain Pro Wrestling out of Denver, Colorado, and uh, Rocky Mountain Pro had their uh, WrestleMania uh, week, what they would call Milestone. Milestone, which is their WrestleMania. And Brian and uh, Marky had the opportunity to join the Royal Rumble on Friday night the, in the, the Colorado the Cup. Colorado Cup, along and, with Rio. Uh, he was sort of there. <laughs> and Rio, yeah, yeah, Rio. Rio and, was Rio, our manager. Yes, uh, <laughs> Starner was on the mic. Uh, he was uh, uh, doing play-by-play, some color, which was kind of cool. And then uh, you know, Marky came out. Uh, has an elimination, and an official he does elimination. Have, he does. He has an official elimination, and then he got the evil living shit beat out of him by <laughs> Oh man, it was so good. <laughs> but I will give it to I will give it to Marky. He he stood he, right up to him. He stood right up to him. Don't know he if I slapped him in the face. Forearm uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would have slapped him either. But I mean, dude looks like Damon looks like taxi driver. Oh, he's for those if dude. anybody who wants a visual, he's about six foot. Three or four and about two seventy five. Yeah, he's and a looks big like dude. taxi driver mohawk and all. Yeah, he's yeah, a big. He's, he's a big he's dude. Big. Yeah. So uh, make Brian look like a little wiener dog. Yeah. That is correct. <laughs> Brian, can you? Uh, do you want to share? Can you share? Can um, you it is share a or? subscriber only thing. Okay. For Rocky Mountain, so. They might okay. clip some of it, but uh, twitch.tv slash Rocky Mountain Pro, and you can check out some highlights from Milestone 11. Um, we do the pre-show as well, which is free, so you can check the pre-show out, which does include myself. And the Colorado John Cup Starna. does free as well. Yeah, so you can go right over there and watch the entire Colorado Cup. And then if you don't want to watch the whole thing and you just want to see Friday, plan. Fr- uh, Friday, I will, I will show some clips on Friday's show. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. So yeah. glad you're back. Let's talk bowling. All right. What do we Calvin got? hasn't touched a bowling ball in months. You're and, right. Uh, <laughs> at, hey, at least bowling is now open in Nova Scotia. I know it stayed open in New Brunswick, but at least things are heading in the right direction. Yes, we are actually, as of July 27th, it was announced today, no more masks in New Brunswick. Even better. So I Tim am and I, excited. Uh... Yeah, Tim and Ice County is officially the only county in the state of Maine that has no active COVID cases at this time. Nice. We are up to, I think we're actually, sorry, I shouldn't say up to, we're down to 25 here in New Brunswick. So You know, I, I just, 
the only worry that I have, and again, we're not going to make this political. We're not going to go down the COVID route. But the only thing I want to say is, is I do worry a little bit about the Delta variant. Um, it, it is yes. what it is. I to just, be honest, to be honest, you should be worried about every variant. But again, we won't get right. into that. Right. Yes. Um, I mean, I I am vaccinated. I'm happy. I'm vaccinated. I. Hey, I just traveled to another state, and out there there was no mat. They they had lifted yep. their mask mandate as well, um, and you still saw people. Some of them had them on, some of them yep. didn't. But I still felt very comfortable. Still, everyone was still distancing and hands, and so. I think that's I think that's going to be the thing is we're going to actually understand like, hey, maybe we hygiene. should be swapping spit with everybody and licking our hands and touching everybody. Like, I'm I'm, it, so my job. Um, was very uh, I guess pre-pandemic would be very much you know shake hands you're yeah. really I'm going to come into houses. their personal houses yeah you know I'm going into people's houses and you always introduce yourself and you're always hey I'm Tim and you shake hands and you talk and you sit there and things like that um, it was very bizarre over the last year going to people's houses and standing six feet apart and being I am Tim you know I Going to take a look at your roof, going to measure it, take pictures, blah, blah, blah. Um, I have had some over the last couple of weeks actually come out and uh, shake hands. I'm okay with it. Again, yeah. I, I I do things that I haven't done before, which is I have hand sanitizer in my, you know, in my company vehicle. And I do what I do. Yeah. I go in and I sanitize. But, yeah. again, we're, let's, we'll move on. Right. Um, let's talk so, about uh, so speaking of, well, I guess we're, it's half COVID, half bowling. Um, we, Dieppe has implemented the foot pedals for resets. Okay. So I don't know if that's going to be a permanent thing. I'm kind of hoping it is because it's interesting to just kind of walk back, tap your foot, reset. You don't have to bend over. You don't have to do that. So, so. I have bowled in a couple of houses in my time where they had foot pedals. Yeah. Old Town still does. Yes, they do, but theirs are up near. Yeah, theirs are halfway up the ball return. Halfway up the ball return, meaning you could potentially. So yeah, you could. Uh, talk, uh, oh yeah, you could reset so it on your own. Yeah. The old Pitzio Bowling Center um, had foot pedals that were up near the front of the ball return, right, or closer to the line, where uh, but, where uh, where the button traditionally is now, yes. just on the floor. So right. Russ Neely more than more than once threw a ball and would reset the lane. Because it because the way the back foot his, swung out his foot yeah yeah um, I personally like the foot pedal I don't yeah. care where it is I don't care where it is if it's up front or up back I just think it's I think it needs to be in back because like you said somebody like me or like a Josh LeBlanc type who has a big foot swing at the end could reset yep mm -hmm. and then but if it's at the back you're not gonna you're, unless you're Unless you're walking in by the ball rack, you're not going to reset it, right? Yeah, it, it it would it would change a little bit about the world. You wouldn't be able to have those guys right up on top of the approach because you know somebody right. goes to step around them and oh, you reset a lane. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I I think that I, I'll be I'd interested be four to foot see. Pedals. I would. Yeah, I like them. I do. I like. I, I just. I do. I mean it. It doesn't. It doesn't detract from the game. I mean, things like that. But no, it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be a like like a foot pedal. It could just be like a, a square or something in the floor. You know, like everyone thinks the old traditional big stainless steel or whatever foot pedals. They don't even. I I bet they have a modern oh, take sure. on those to put in. I yeah. just I like them. I do. I like yeah. them. Um, couple of tournaments coming up. Um, the Triple Crown Series at Lita Lanes. Uh, has their second round. Uh, so the five stringer was run, run was won by Bover. Um, the ten stringer will be Sunday, July eleventh. Um, that is a hundred dollar entry fee. And when is that? Sunday, July eleventh at eleven a.m. Winner of that ten string will get you a free entry into the twenty stringer. So, which is in well, August. Which is in August, and unfortunately, it coincides with the international slash national uh, mixed doubles in Augusta. Uh, yeah, one seven ten. Uh, unfortunately, it just 
It's the way it kind of lined up. And uh, so I think that's unfortunate. One, That'll take away from both tournaments. I think so. That's why yeah. you need like a schedule to go out here. Because you could probably fill both tournaments. You could probably I, fill another twenty stringer and the doubles. Probably, especially if it with, was separate. If 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 it was separate weekends, absolutely. Yeah, I think you could. But yeah, or if the border was open and, and our friendly folks from Canadian land could. Oh yeah, I'd be up. I'd be a partner. I'd be up there for sure. Yeah. Um, soon. 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 I know. I yeah. hope so. I, I'm ready. The end, they say the end of July. This is the federal choice because if not, we would be open. But they say the end of July. That was the last update. So yeah, we'll taking see. the end. Yeah, like I said, I just uh, I'm ready. Yeah. Um, you know, I had to be up. It was funny as I had to drive up to Holton this morning uh, for for a job site <laughs> visit. So close. And I was so close. I was like, man, this seems so odd getting off this exit right here. Yeah. Because <laughs> another three miles, I'm at the border, like where I'm used to. Oh, you're you know, right by I the Walmart there when you get off. Yeah. Of the exit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Triple Crown series, uh, that's coming up. We've got uh, the All Nighter coming up at Stars and Strikes. That's a fun tournament, everyone. Go bowl that. It's a very fun tournament. Um, but get a hotel room somewhere close oh, for the God. morning. Yes, it, look, start... it's been, it's been honestly, it's been years since I since I bowled that tournament. For the simple fact is, is I live two hours away from there. Yeah. So when we get done at four in the morning. After you've been bowling since eight. After you've been bowling since eight. And now I've got a two hour drive home. And I'm not getting home until six in the morning. Uh, my, I can't do it anymore. Well, you waste the whole Saturday. Really? Because you're Sun- sleeping. Oh, yeah. Because it's a Friday night, isn't it? Friday yeah. night? Yeah. Yeah. It's Friday night. Yeah. So you waste the whole Saturday because you're, you know, you'll sleep four or five hours and then. You pray for rain. I was going to say 11, 11, 12 o'clock. That's when I wake up on Saturdays. <laughs> that's, that's my normal oh. wake up time. <laughs> oh my God. I can't remember the last time I slept until. I know. That's why I'm so smart and didn't have kids. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> Yet. No, not happening. Never? No. All right. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> I mean, not that we want a little Calvin running around, but uh, no, you don't. No, I'm, that's true. I'm we'll take a we'll everyone. take a we'll take a little Julie running around, but I don't know if we can take another Calvin running around. Oh God. Um. So the all nighter stars and strikes. Brian, do you know the date on that by some chance? Uh, July. 23rd? I don't remember. The problem is, I don't remember. I think it's the 23rd. I'll check Facebook. So while you're checking that. Uh, you guys big... have no idea how happy I'm going to be when tournaments start happening. Oh, I'll I know. Giving... Trust I'll... me, Calvin. I can see it right now. With us I'll... talking about these, you're just sitting there going, I would. Uh, <sighs> I would die to go to a tournament right now. Um, so we've got a cool, uh, again, another cool tournament coming up on Saturday, July 17th. At Big the Stars and Strikes says that the All Nighter is Friday, July twenty third. It starts at eight p.m. It is forty dollars per person, three person team, uh, team scratch bowling. Each team must consist of one lady and two men. But if they wanted two ladies and one man, I don't believe that is allowed. Hmm. But it is also the. Uh, Russ Neely Senior Invitational All Nighter Tournament. Yes, Tim. they've changed the name uh, to that. Um, so July twenty third, check with Stars and Strikes. I believe they have room available still. I believe yes. I don't and think it is a scratch built. event. Yes, this is not a handicapped event. This is not a nine pin event. This is not a three six nine tournament. Six nine straight this up is marathon scratch straight up bowling. marathon style. I saw Calvin's look. Oh. Uh, Kalorn, so Hedman, Hedman didn't have a stick. Kalorn yeah. gave him his stick, yeah. and he went free diving and took a slap shot off the ankle. Oh, that hurts. Oh. Yeah. Man, and, and if, if any and basketball... And look at him, yeah, I see him on the bench yeah. now, like, 
yeah. dying. It, and I guess that's he'll broke, be out, probably. He'll be out in two minutes. Yeah. He'll, but if any basketball or like football player, oh, they'd be out for like four that, weeks. They'd be out for like six weeks and yeah. they'd be done for the playoffs. Like these guys are unreal what they do to their bodies. Well, yeah. you know, not to get into basketball, but. Per LeBron, they, they 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 started the season too soon. There wasn't enough time yeah. to recuperate. Yeah, yeah. sure, because that made a big difference. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's see. All anyway, right, back to yeah. tournaments. We <laughs> have uh, Big Twenty Bowling Center in Scarborough, Maine. Uh, we'll be having a three six nine ten stringer on Saturday, July seventeenth, starting at eleven a.m. Uh, this is a three-person team. This is a 325 average cap with the highest known league average to be used. So 325 cap, 369 10 stringer, which is kind of interesting that, that you got a cap. And then they're going full handicap, 95% of 130. Holy smoke. So there's like 432 different variations going on oh, here. Holy crap. No, uh, no way. <laughs> so. To register, you want to call Big 20 Bowling Center at uh, 207-883-2131 or online at big20bowling.com. This is $50 per person with 65% of the entry fee goes back to the bowler in prizes. So okay. there is that. Uh, we have uh, Brian outrun the bear. You want to talk about that real quick? Um, Let me pull it up. So no, you if you have it pulled up, Tim, you can I, talk I don't. About it. That's you. God, I wish I had tournaments to talk about. <laughs> Calvin, how you doing over there, buddy? You wanna... uh, dying, hey, let's talk man. about let's talk about a tournament up. Oh no, you don't. Oh, okay. listen, short guy. That would want... be me. Yeah. You want to talk would... about you want to talk about bookcases? You want to you want to oh. you want to see? How... <laughs> I was viciously attacked so... by a bookcase. Yeah. Uh, sure. Outrun the Bear Scratch Singles. Tentative date right now is September 25th at 10 a.m. 9.30 registration. $60 if prepaid before September 15th. 65 if paid after the prepayment due date. Uh, buybacks will be $10 for string one and increased by five each string after. Bolt. Sorry. I was screaming all weekend. I can barely talk. Bowlers have go? unlimited... No, I can do it. Bowlers have unlimited buybacks for the first three strings. If a bowler did not use a buyback in the first three rounds, they will have a buyback to use in the remainder of the tournament. Um, so sign up, sir. Uh, now it is a guaranteed thousand dollar top prize. Oh, that's very good. Just the one buyback after the unlimited, right? Yes. Or the first you three. still have your three. So yeah. you have, yeah, you have unlimited for the first, so you can do the first three strings. And right. if you didn't use a buyback in the first three rounds, you will have a buyback to use in the remainder of the tournament. If you used one in the first three, you don't right. get one after the third. Right. Um, and that is, that is at uh, uh, Ryan's Family Amusement in Millis, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, Brian? I do believe yeah. so. Yes. So there is that. Um, I, I, have told do one of that. I haven't told my wife yet, but I have signed up for it. Uh, As have I. Uh, and I haven't told her because the next day is the first. Uh, I have an the idea. First weekend of uh, the Exeter Pro League, Sunday Pro League. I have so, an idea. Well, I have an idea. You tell Kelly, and I'll tell Angie. <laughs> you know what, guys? I'll do them both for you. I'll tell them both. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, so Angie, no. like, Angie likes me better than Tim anyway. So, Well, as I as I told someone recently, oh, uh, Stephanie Ayotte, uh, yeah. she, she made a comment about it, and I was like, well, most people like Angie better than they like me anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> shocker yeah hold on let me let me get my shocked face on <gasps> oh no that's like saying most people like julie over me <laughs> no way <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah who'd have thunk it right I, color me shocked on that one I'm baffled <laughs> complete bafflement right there <laughs> um oh international the international slash national mixed doubles 
Uh, that is the weekend of August 28th and 29th at uh, 1710 Sports Center in Augusta, Maine. Um, sign up. Bowl. Sign up. <laughs> Who do you contact yeah, call to Mike. sign up, sir? Call, you call Mike or Leanne, <laughs> probably Mike, at the bowling center. Uh, if I remember correctly, 6211710? Yes, two zero seven six two one one seven one zero. Wow, I'm impressed. Sign up. It's easy than... to remember because it's one seven ten. Well, yes, I got more, that. More, more than merrier. I uh, would love to get people to... again. That is a scratch, scratch tournament, non handicapped tournament, one male, one female tournament, <laughs> tournament. Um. It is the same weekend as the 20 stringer in Lita. It it is Although. unfortunately. Unfortunately, and I don't want to take away from um from Alexis's tournament down at uh, Lita. However, I am bowling in the uh the one up here, so I'd like more people up here so we can have a bigger prize fund. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Just saying. That's all I'm doing Tim, is do just we, saying. Tim, do we have any Lock letters. Lock letters. Uh, we do have some. Ooh. We've got some. And uh, um, we've got some. I, I One of these is going to be a fairly simple answer, but I'm going to, we'll, we'll answer it. Okay. And I think one of these we're going to have a pretty good discussion on. So Okay. So I'm going to uh, start with this one. Uh, a caller would like ca- a caller. Holy caller. Shit. <laughs> Jesus. A, uh, a listener uh, would like us to explain the difference between synthetic lanes versus wood lanes. Like, how does it really make a difference? Uh, oh, this is what I'm taking. it. That's all they asked was, how do you explain the difference? So I'm reading into this question as meaning... How does a ball react differently? How That's does... what I was thinking too, because we, we both know our, well, one's wood and talking, one's plastic. Are we talking approaches or are we talking all together? Uh, they actually had two separate. One was the lanes, and then they had the synthetic approach versus wood approach. Okay. Synthetic approaches are hot garbage, and I wish they would all burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Fair I enough. Actually, I actually don't mind synthetic approaches, but. Really? Yeah, I, I don't them. mind them. Do you They're like not... to slide? Yeah. <laughs> I need to slide. <laughs> then how can you like synthetic approaches? Because I slide no matter what. Oh, I wish I could do that. Yeah. Um, I, haven't, I haven't really found a, a place where I'm sticky. Um, Except actually, I shouldn't say that. I should say park lanes. Park lanes was wood lanes, and they were sticky as hell. Okay. That's weird that there right? were approaches, right? Yeah, but it was sticky. So the biggest difference uh, that I will say between synthetic lanes and wood lanes is one is plastic, <laughs> synthetic, okay, and the other the is wood. Right. That's the um, obvious. Brian, I'll, why, why don't you uh, give us your take on the well, difference between I, synthetic lanes and wood I know just me lanes. personally, when, we, when I bowl on wooden lanes, I throw a much more cross-alley ball than I do on synthetic lanes because I find my ball does not break on synthetic lanes, so I have to throw pretty much straight at the head pin with, to get my rotation to make the pin action the way I want it. If I try and throw cross alley, it just stays on pretty much on the, the three pin the whole time, and it right. doesn't break into that head pin. Right. That's at least what I find. Yeah, one doesn't have as much break as the other. What do you but. prefer? Synthetics. Uh, are we talking scores, or are we talking throwing the ball? Because I find I, I find I score better on synthetic lanes versus wooden lanes, but I would rather like throwing my ball on wooden Sorry. lanes. Yeah, I know. I just seen it. I'm getting pissed off. It was like a triple deflection. There was no way he was stopping it. They did um, the triple Lindy. Yeah. So I I find I throw better on wooden lanes, but my ball is works better on synthetic lanes. Okay. So it's interesting. Yeah. Do you mean throw better, or isn't like it's it's less effort to throw on wooden lanes because you no, don't have I to maybe? No, like I find like I'm more accurate. Oh, yeah. 
but since I suppose that's you have you, a natural snap. Like you don't, you're not a right. guy that has to try and snap the ball. It's just natural no, for you. It's just right off the finger. So yeah. So for you not having having to alter that must be difficult. So I right. understand that. Yeah. What do you so, prefer, Tim? Um, I prefer wood. Wood I prefer wood too. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you do, Calvin. That's what um, she said. Yeah, that's what she said. No, I I prefer wooden wooden lanes. Um, versus synthetic. I don't mind bowl. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind bowling on synthetic lanes. Right. Um, I really it's, don't. It, we used to on uh, in uh, Bowler MOS for Can Am. I loved the Bowlerama in St. John. That's, that's fully synthetic, right? <laughs> yes, I know, but I never had an issue sliding there. And you want to know why? Because the Canadians are very smart and they put this lovely substance at the end of the lanes where you just lift the mat and you put your shoe on it and you can slide. Yeah, and you don't have to use powder because I cannot that's stand like, powder in a bowling alley. It's just dust. That's all that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I just but it I helps. Don't, like I said, I don't yeah. mind synthetic lanes. Uh, Newport is synthetic I, lanes. I won the handicap singles in Newport yep. this year. I, so I bowled well there. Um, I won't say I just like I don't like synthetic approaches because they make my knee hurt. That's why I don't right. like them. Yes. So for me, the way I throw a ball, um, my ball reacts more on a synthetic lane. So it, well, I shouldn't say that. It depends on how the lanes are treated. Right. Because there are some synthetic where you've gone where they've oiled the lanes when you don't have to mm-hmm. with synthetic. Um, so... I find that, like with Newport, I have to throw the ball more at the pin versus my natural right to. I have a natural right to left hook, not a big hook, not it's not like a ten pin hook, but it's just how I throw the ball. I have a yeah. right to left spin. Because you kind of come across your body and sometimes, yeah. yeah, it's just how I end up. And yeah. so for me, you know, look, and I do throw it hard enough where I can get it through most breaks meaning right. my ball is not going to break a lot it's going to break some because i do throw it hard enough to do that i just find that and again now we get into the te- technological side of things mm-hmm. because now, yeah, it now it depends on, on what bowling ball, what bowling ball i'm going to use am i using my you know am i using my reactive use or my urethane which right no the original reactive use on synthetic lanes were deadly because wherever you put those things down they stayed yeah so if you could hit the front part of any shot, you had a good likelihood of making it. But like my my reactive you or my urethanes, they break. They're my, more like a the old um they're soft. Cyclones. Yeah, they're softer. So it it does depend uh it really does depend on the type of the composition of the ball versus the composition of the lane. Um with wooden lanes if you're taking care of them, there should be some oil on the wooden lanes, lane oil. Right. Mm-hmm. There should be. You don't typically that, you don't want a dry alley. Well, no, lane. because that's how you get broken boards Correct. and like yeah, nails start coming up. So warping. Yep. So again, depending on depending on the composition of the ball I'm using depends on how much break that ball is going to have. Um, I right. think we all, I think we all know by now that my favorite bowling ball that I use that I always end up going back to are my original Comet Pro rubbers. Yeah. I love them. They just, they're comfortable in my hand and, and I know what they're going to do when I throw them because I've had right. them for 30 years. Right. Yeah. I actually really like the newer makeup of the newer Paramount balls. I have a set of four of those, and I really like the grip you can get on those. They have a good finish on them. I like the fact that they're harder. Yeah, they don't chip either. And yeah. I have a set of Ram Ram. Uh, I can't uh, Ram twos, and they don't chip. Those things are hard as hell. So I anyway, have, I have a set of two fives that I've used since I was eight years old. Two fives. Yeah. Is that what you throw? Yeah. My black and white ones. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
That's very interesting. That is yeah. interesting. Okay, let's talk. Okay, that's going to lead me down a little rabbit hole for a quick sec here. Go for it. So, Calvin, let me ask you a question then. Do you do you mainly throw those two fives? No, I mainly throw. Well, now I throw my two sixes. Okay. But until until like two years ago, I was throwing two fives. Like I think actually I think 2015 Worlds, I threw two fives. And then in 2000, Fredericton. yeah, in Fredericton. And then 2017, I threw my two fives. And then I think it was 2018 when I switched over to two sixes. So three so, years ago now. So do you feel bowling with a lighter bowling ball that you get more action? Yes. Is that why? I, you... I throw a lot more, I throw a lot more snap on my ball. Okay. The, the, before I uh, finally switched over to two sixes, and even sometimes I do it still at the Worlds is I'll throw my two sixes at the start of the day, and then at the end of the day, I'll pick up the two fives because I'll be a lot, I'll be tired. Yep. So I can throw a lot more snap on my ball, and that's what I need. I need my snap on my ball or it doesn't work as much. It get, I get a lot of punches. I get a lot of two and ones. I get a lot of crap. I don't get the extra pins to break. So when I, later in the day, when my arm is getting tired, I throw my two fives. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm 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 intrigued. About what? So I'll, I'll bring them when when whenever it is opens yeah. up, I'll bring them. Yeah. So and I say that because over the last five to ten years, I go between the two my two sevens and two sixes. Right. Depending on how I'm feeling, depending on the house, depending on a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. You'll change halfway through a tournament depending if you're splitting or not. And yeah. and that Brian has seen that me do that. Yep, yep. Do he, that has seen, he has seen me, and then he typically will give me shit for doing it. Because you still split, no matter what. No, I don't. If <laughs> when you start throwing punches, you throw a bunch of them in a row. <laughs> you shut that pie hole. I do not. Yes, okay. you do, Tim. Yeah, stop. I do. Just stop. <laughs> I do. Just, just stop. Um, I I don't know. I I. I don't know how I would throw two fives. I a little bit harder than you do your two sixes. Yeah. Well, you know the funny the funny thing is when we were down at the call it the mixed worlds the mixed nationals, um, I was when I would go down and throw bowling balls and loosen up if I was sitting out, I didn't take my bowling balls. I just used the house balls, which are two fours and two fives. Yeah, I would never do that. No, I wouldn't either. I want my own bowling I balls. I it. need to throw them so I can have a comfortable, know the grip. Feel I'm your only, hand. I'm on, all I'm doing is just trying to get loose or stay loose. I don't need my bowling balls for that. Yeah, but it's a different weight. Yeah. That doesn't, again, all I'm doing is I, I don't do it for my arm. I do it for my legs to slide. That's right. all I'm doing. I don't. Look, this is gonna sound. This is gonna. God, this is gonna sound conceited, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I've been bowling long enough now that my arm knows what the fuck I'm doing. Like, well, that's not conceited. It's that's got the natural. muscle. It's got my the muscle memory. It's doing all the time too. Is that girl topless? Wait, where? Oh, what what are we huh? Huh? She is in the crowd. I couldn't see. Oh no. Okay, she's got like a bra or bikini on. Yeah. Oh, you just ruined it for me. Yeah. She was right up there and she's bouncing too. Holy. <laughs> Are we still recording? <laughs> Are we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, okay. So that's that's interesting there. So yeah. let me ask you this, Calvin, because you mentioned it. So the synthetic approach versus wood approach, what's your take? Oh, I would approach all the all the way. Brian, I, 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 I would do that over that one. So yeah, like I, I definitely prefer wooden approaches with like I think Augusta has the most amazing approaches in any house they I've ever do. bowled in. They yeah. They're all consistent. They're all the same. You don't like yeah. very rarely do you stick in that building. You know, it is I, very and I will, true. I will tell you, um, Lita Lanes has they do they have, they have their, fantastic yeah. approaches. I love their approaches. Kingswood's um, probably another one. Kingswood has great approaches. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have a problem when any time I bowled a Kingswood yeah. sliding. I do like it, and I do like Augusta. Um, yeah. 
I, I think Augusta has fantastic approaches as well. And and when people say, well, what what makes a fantastic approach? And I'll tell you, it's consistency. Because I can slide on lane one, that I can slide on lane eleven, that I can slide on lane eighteen. Yeah, it's for I me. Don't have to worry about it. Yeah, for me, that's exactly it, Tim. That's where I go into. It's because I don't think about it all day. Yeah. I take a practice slide because yeah. it's routine at that point. I'm not Absolutely. checking anything. It's just part no. of a routine. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I always should, think a, you shouldn't yeah. have to worry about that. No, nope. no. And that's, but there are houses where, you know, we go and well, you know that you better. Right. You better but let's face take it, too. Slide. There's not much you can do about it in a tournament like the world's when you have 200 people in a building, it gets humid, it, you know, people sweat, some of it drips. Like, it's going to get tackier as the day goes on just because the amount of people that are in a building. I think anywhere for the world's, it gets stickier in the third match of the day than it is the first match of the day. Halifax Fairlanes, when they were open, had some of the best approaches oh, from yeah. day one of the tournament through day five of the tournament. Um, and I think some of that was because of the size of the bowling alley. And the size of the building, yeah, you and could the air, the and the air exchange yeah. unit they had, things like that. Um, Moncton, it gets I find, tacky at the it, end of I the day. I find it's tacky at the end of the day. Yeah. It's great at the beginning of the day. Um, Bangor again, another one when you had the worlds was great at the beginning of the day. Mm-hmm. And or if it rained, and, and nothing about the roof, no roof jokes. What? If it was raining outside, it was sticky in the bowl and alley. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, Calvin, this one, Brian and I have answered this one before, but someone wanted to know that now that you're now that you've joined. Okay. Uh, what do you think of Freshy is about? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's not good. <laughs> He's just not good. I asked Chris Boyver how bad it was, and oh man, I I I asked him. So <laughs> I said I said to him, I said, "All right, listen, I want to know your total scores, or your total score, because it was a qualifying." So I asked him, I said, "I want to know your total score, and I'm going to guess what the both of you had." And he said, he said twelve. I think we had twelve sixteen or twelve seventeen. I said, "Okay." So I'm going to say that you had a six. 34 and freshy probably had about a 570 he said yeah you're pretty close i had a 643 and freshy had a 570 i'm like man it's just freshy bud it's time to give it up (laughs) it's just it's just bad it's embarrassing i'm so happy i'm so happy lucky picked you up because they're gonna be so easy to beat now it's, it's oh my god he's cutting a promo on the show <laughs> he's cutting a promo <laughs> like you seriously you need to give it up he, oh. i sent that message to chris boy bear he sent me back a picture of freshie flipping me off <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna have the first ever ripping the rat grudge match yeah. when the border opens. Oh, that is awesome. I'll challenge him. I'll take him on. I don't oh care. Oh my god, that's awesome. Man, all um, I'll need all I'll need is five hundred strings and I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be golden. <laughs> that'd be the easiest hundred bucks I ever. Ding made. ding ding. <laughs> In this corner, yeah. weighing in a solid 138 pounds, he is the king of the north. <laughs> yeah. Calvin Luck. Yeah. And in oh. the other corner, a guy who can't see over his belt buckle. <laughs> Freshy. <laughs> oh so, folks, this is a good time to segue into our very special episode 69 of Ripping the Rack podcast, The Roast of Tim Matero. I don't so think please we're going to get through this. Like, we're laughing already. And we're just making fun of Freshie. How are we going to make so, fun of Tim? And- <laughs> so, please get, get your, uh, you can, if you want to do a written piece, send them to our email. What's that email, Tim? Well, we'll get to that. I'm not done asking these questions. <laughs> I understand, but you could just do the email real quick. Ripping I'm not trying rack, to close the show. I'm just trying to pump the rack up your podcast, roast. Ripping the rack podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, so send some written stuff there, and we oh, will. We can read right. it. If you want to do a little video, <sighs> you could send it there as well, and we'll get your roasts of one <sighs> that's, that's great. TJM. 
as we just <laughs> as Calvin just gave you an example of how to roast. Um, <laughs> he set the oven and he forgot it. Set it and forget it. <laughs> <laughs> my god <laughs> he can't see over his belt buckle <laughs> Cal- Calvin you broke Tim yeah you I broke, broke him. him we're done I think the episode's <laughs> over <laughs> Tim, can't, Tim can't go on how are we going to do this roast Tim's going to be dying he's not going to be able to listen to anything <laughs> Oh yeah, we're not gonna be able to do this roast. Okay, Tim. So <laughs> next letter you want to read? Uh, yeah, you want me to answer a question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you, Calvin? What do you see as the biggest difference between the United States teams versus or and Canada to Canadian teams? So uh, mine has always been the same, and I've said this, and and I mean, granted, most of the time, even the Canadians have won the singles. You know, it's kind of like a 50-50 split with the singles and the, for Canadians and Americans. But I find the, the Americans don't do as much team stuff as we do. You guys have, like, your, um, your pro series, which I tried to do, which wasn't a big hit. Because, like I said, most of our people here are teams bowlers. They like the team atmosphere. They like the team stuff. Where you guys have all your singles, you know, your, your, you got your pro series. You got your whatever your doubles you got your 10 stringers you got your 20 stringers you got your where we don't have that here all we have is weekend teams weekend team mix weekend like five person six person seven person teams so i think that's the advantage that canada seems to have over the states when it comes to the world is that we're more built to cheer each other on and pick each other up where you guys are you know all about you it's all about freshy and it's all it's, it's all about you know this guy and that guy and like listen i can start roasting some more if you want but you look at a team like you look at a team like new world order or slash main event like you have seven anchor bowlers really like the team that we that we had like uh that we beat in 2019 you had Purdy, who may not Purdy may not be an anchor bowler, but he can bowl anchor. You had Evan Riva, again, not an anchor bowler, but he can bowl anchor. And you had Jeff Lapierre, who's basically a leadoff guy, but could essentially bowl anchor. You had Mark Carrier, who probably should be the anchor of that team. And you had Sean Morrison, who could be an anchor of a team. And you had like all seven of those guys are all anchor bowlers. Well, you can't put seven anchor bowlers on a team and expect to win. You need position bowlers. You need a guy who can bowl leadoff. You need a guy who can bowl second. You need a guy who can bowl third, fourth, fifth, et cetera, et cetera. So you look at a team like A+. You have Jerry Dunn, who's essentially your leadoff guy. You have somebody like, or even Jerry Dunn could be your second. And then you have somebody like, you know, you have Corkum or whoever they got there. Chris in the McGrady. Time. Chris McGrady is your second, right? Because he's a guy who's solid in any position that you put him in. Then you have your Matt McPhee, who's your third. And then you have Matt and Nate, who are probably the best, second uh, second best to us. But your, your best four or five combination at the Worlds. Like, you're not going to find two guys who are more consistent than Matt Harnett and Nate LeBlanc. So we, Canada has that kind of mix of team where the States has a whole bunch of singles bowlers. You know what I mean? So that's my take on it. I find that we have an advantage. Granted, you're going to have teams like uh, Academy, the, who won in 2000, what was it, 16? Yeah, um, 2016. 18. 18, right, because Lucky Strike won in 2016. Yeah. Yeah, so 18. But both so you look of those at that, teams were set up very similar to what you were saying. Right. Well, I wouldn't uh, say Lucky Strike is, but... They, they are in Lucky a way. Strike. Hear me out. Hear me out. Beauvais is your leadoff guy. He's going to sit in the top spot most of the day, him or Boudreaux. And then right. you have Pelletier or Slinky who can bowl two. Your three guy is either Baker or Barber. Uh, and then you got Godwin and Surratt who can go four or five. Anchor. I mean, they're set up with position guys too. Right. Right. 
And but then, they'll yeah. but they will have the difference is Lucky will have they have what I would say four anchor bowlers on that. Correct. Team, right? Yes. They do. You know, yes. Godwin's an anchor bowler. Uh, and, and again, people, people also have to understand when I, bowlers. when I say yeah. an anchor bowler, it doesn't mean that he's going to average 140 for the week and everything else. It means that he, when there's two, two boxes on the line, who do you want up there? To the throw most marks. consistent two bucks. Right. The person who's going to give you the best shot to win. And what I mean yes. by that is the person who's going to throw the mo- get the better, the best breaks that he can make. Yeah. So they do have, you know, I would, I would put Baker in there. I'd put Godwin in there. Um, you know, the Barber, Barber. I oh, would yeah, put Barber's Barber as, as a, Barber's yeah. a, he's, Barber throws a lot of strikes. As say what you bowler. want about, you know, say what you want about Dave Barber. The guy can bowl anchor. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. He did against us in 2015. Yep. Um, Surrett, look, Surrett, Surrett. As Jeez. long as it's not Saturday. Surrett and, <laughs> well, no, Surrett and Harnett are, are a lot alike when they, because they bowl anchor. They hit the head pin a lot and they, they can make a lot of shots. You know what I mean? Right. That's the thing yeah. with Matty Bum yeah. is he hits the head pin a lot. He's going to make 90% of his nine drops when he gets them, but he's going to yeah. make the shots too, the two and ones, the three and ones that he has to cut. Yeah, which is just like Nate too. Nate's the same way. Yeah. Nate, Nate to me is is one of the best anchor bowlers in the game right now. Mm-hmm. I, I'd put him. I'd put him over and I, just about to be honest. To, exactly. To be honest, I'd probably put him over anybody in the in the bowling world right now. I don't know well, that there's t- anybody. It's, it's tough to say right now because Canada hasn't bowled in tournaments in a while. Still doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He could, not. Have not, he could have not touched a ball in six months, and I'd still put him up against you, who's been bowling since this basically got going. I'd put him up against you, and I'd, he'd probably destroy you. He might, or he might not. Yeah. No, he would. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> he's, yeah. already, he's already destroyed me once. That was enough. Yeah, that's right. He did bum rape you in the can. Oh, my God. That <laughs> that was a beating. That was. Oh. The, you know the worst part is, is I didn't bowl bad. No, you still I, had no, about Throw like a 130 or 140. Like, yeah. and I got absolute, but I, look, he's a, he also he, went 1480 something that day. He's a great ball. He's a great bowler. He is. And he's oh, a great dude. Can. And he's yeah. a great dude. I, I oh, yeah. have a tremendous amount of respect for, for Nate. I just, you yeah. know, I appreciate, I do appreciate good bowling, even when it's done against me as much oh, as absolutely. I, absolutely. As oh, much as I could do. You no. just basically you just basically look at the guy and just give him the bird and say calm yourself. But you're still actually saying like you're good, man. That's, That's awesome. yeah. Wicked yeah. Well, look, like, look. Yeah. He threw the 180 against me, and he made some incredible shots. Oh, he like, did. Oh, I think like, he made. And that's, did that's he the cut, thing like, to understand. Is, or something? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he, cut, he cut the six ten. Like he cut oh. the six ten and 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 without wood. No, not the six ten because that's right next to each other. The oh, four no, the, sorry, the, the four ten. The four ten. Yeah. Um, without wood, I mean that. Yeah. And he didn't look. play it off the wall. He cut it no, clean no, from the left it side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that was wasn't that in, even in the ninth box or ninth Yeah, it was. Toward, it was after he had thrown like seven in a row, seven or yeah. eight in a row against me. Because someone it, said make that, and then he did. And that, and was then, probably yeah. that was probably yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> that was probably me. <laughs> were you bowling with him, Calvin? That, no, we were that, on the lanes. We were on the lanes beside him. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you I know, get to watch it all day too. <laughs> yeah. He just—he's such a good. Again, he's such a good dude. Oh, for sure. You know, um, I'm gonna save this. Uh, I'm gonna save this last question for next week uh, when Marky's back because I think this is going to be a question that. Um, the four of us can expound on and give us uh expound. Oh my god, Timothy. It's a ten dollar word. That's impressive. And I used it in the correct format. Oh man. In context and everything I'm... else. Oh crap. You're growing up right before our eyes. Yeah. I'm at the so end proud. of the day. At the end of the day, you'll probably be able to see over your belt buckle. I'm I'm maybe sparring. I don't well, sometimes I don't wear a belt just so I can see up and over. Bar sometimes nine. you don't wear pants. Sometimes <laughs> I don't. I may not be wearing pants right now. I'm really hoping you are. <laughs> yeah. I might. Wait. 
I might be wearing pants. I'm not wearing pants. I can tell I'm you wearing that shorts, much. actually. But... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> it's hot shorts. as balls. You're right. I like it hot, though. It's 90 degrees. Yeah, but I, you I know don't what? Like it's humidity. not bad. I love yeah. the heat. I love the heat. I hate the humidity. It's a 68% uh, dew point tomorrow, Tim. Oh, here no, on the gonna coast, be, it's gonna be it's gonna suck balls, and not in a good way. It's gonna suck like donkey balls. Donkey balls. Okay. Yes, that's a bad thing. So anyway, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna call it a night. Episode sure. sixty nine. Ten more episodes, folks. You have ten more episodes until. Well, episode really nine because because we gotta have time to produce it and. Get stuff together. So yeah, really, like should, nine. We should probably have it in like the Friday before. Yes, please. Yes, please. Have it and then, in. Uh, and then we can know who to work it and how to work it and what yep. to say and who to say what. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, get your videos, get your written, whatever, however you want to get it in. Yeah. Uh, get it to us at rippingtherackpodcast at gmail dot com. Uh, you can uh, send it to us on Facebook. Uh, Ripping the Rack podcast. You can send it to us on Twitter at Ripping the Rack Pack. Ripping the Rack podcast. We have uh, an you Instagram can it, as well. We do. You can send it to Brian's OnlyFans if you want. You can. The site is still under construction. It's still a big under, okay. construction. Yeah. yeah. Takes yeah. a big time to <laughs> make a video for Brian. Oh, what a tip in. Oh, what hand eye. So I'm guessing that Tampa just Tampa scored. scored. Go Tampa! Nice. Suck it, Montreal. <laughs> and, all your and if you want to hear fans. other riveting content like that, you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, uh, iTunes, Anchor, Breaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, wherever else you listen to your podcasts. And don't forget, Friday morning, we will talk a little bit about Brian and Marky's experience in uh, Denver. We'll uh, show you we'll some highlights. Yeah. Show you some highlights, and uh, you know who knows? Maybe I'll break out a few uh, a few jokes. Oh, oh God! No, who knows? You'll make someone crash their car, Tim. D nice did not crash. We appreciate the fact that she stayed on the road. Listen responsibly, folks. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and don't forget Brian and Mark uh, Brian and Marky on Sunday evenings on Twitch TV slash Johnny Death Drop. You can catch uh, uh, catch them on the Dudes and Belts chat cast and talk rocky mountain pro wrestling so guys have a great week and uh, we'll see you friday morning see you later peace